everybody, it's Shane Cook here in Melbourne, Australia. Trust you well today. Well, I want to share with you a object lesson. It's a paper tear that's so powerful and uh, can be an amazing tool to use when sharing the gospel and also sharing about the fact that Jesus is the center of the entire Bible. So all you need is a, pair of, a piece of A4 size paper. You need a pair of scissors and we're ready to begin. So I want to show you how we start by just giving you, in fact, it'll be an instructional uh, tutorial uh, video giving you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this from the very beginning to the end. What you're doing is you're taking a piece of A4 size paper. I'm using white paper. I'm using a background that you can see it so it pops off. If you were doing this in front of a class with kids or families, you'd want to do it with some bright paper, maybe a bright yellow paper, depending on the background of the wall or wherever you're using to put it up on. Of course, if you're doing it for a large crowd, you want to do it with a larger piece of card, maybe an A3 or A1 size card that can be utilized so it can be seen from far. Okay, here we go. So we're going to tear, uh, or first of all, fold the paper. And uh, it's first of all just giving the first fold and then folding it over. It looks like it's a house, so that's the second fold. And, uh, and then finally, you have a third fold over here. And this is almost as if you're making an aeroplane. Now, very important that whenever we fold a piece of paper in this shape over here, taking it from, let me go back from this one over here, down, down, and across. Whenever we fold it to this, the next step is going to be a part of every single paper tear that you use, because this is the beginning part of multiple paper tears, particularly when we're using about Jesus dying on the cross. Here's the first part. We're going to take this uh, page over here, this book. In fact, I'm going to call this my Bible. So what I would do is when I'm coming before the kids, I would fold this off so that when it does uh, and I fold it back like this, this is going to be my little Bible. So my little Bible looks like that over there. It's a small little book. I'm now ready to share the story with the children. I'm going to open it up again and I'm going to fold it back in those three folds. Now, when we fold it, the first cut, this is going to be cut into three equal portions. So as you can see over here, I'm going to take it along here. I'm going to cut this piece over here, and then I'm going to cut the next piece. And as we cut them, we now are ready to tell the story. Here's what I shared a moment ago. Remember I said that if we use those three folds, every time the one, the closest, the largest piece is going to unfold, and it's going to become a cross. So this is the centerpiece of our entire story. We're now ready. So we have the cross as the centerpiece. Let me give you some of these pieces here. Now it's very important that when you're doing this paper tear that you don't throw any of these pieces away. Because each piece has a very significant point with regards to the message you're about to share. As I open them up, I'm going to put them in the right place so that you're able to see how you lay out the story. These little little square ones or with the little piece on the bottom, these are going to be um, for the ground where the cross is being put into. This over here is going to be on the side, one facing towards the cross and one facing away from the cross. Let me put them a bit closer over here so you can see them. One in towards the cross and one away from the cross. This over here is one of the little dice. There's two of these over here, two equal little ones. Let's find them over here as I open this up here. There they are there. Now, this piece over here, we're going to put at the top as if it is a sign across the top of the cross. Uh, and this one over here is going to be put in the side as if it were a spear. So let me give you the story with regards to this paper tear. We have all of the pieces in place. Now, one of the things we know is that Jesus is the center of the entire Bible. From the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, every single one of the 66 books of both the Old and the New Testament give hint as to who Jesus is. For example, in Genesis 3.15, we are told that he would, the one that would come would um, bruise, his heel would be bruised, but he would crush the head of the serpent. In the book of Exodus, we read about the Passover lamb. And again, right throughout every book of the Bible, Jesus is highlighted either in shadow 
or in type. And so you can go through all and I will give you a PDF of each book of the Bible and what it represents Jesus to be. Because this is what we want. We want to say that the entire Bible, our book, that as we open it up, centers on one person. Everything comes down. Christmas brings us down to Jesus. Uh, the cross brings us down to Jesus. The resurrection brings us down to Jesus. So every part of the Bible brings us to this one focus. The Bible tells us that the gospel is really four pieces. There's four pieces or four components. One, there is the God component. Secondly, there is the sin component, which is us. And then the third uh, component is the solution, which is Jesus, who came to rescue us. And the fourth component is our response. There is always a response required when we come to the gospel. So the God component is that we are made to have fellowship with God. We are made to be in relationship with God. That is what he had. The, the picture was in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. But because of man's sin, what happened is the sin of the first Adam caused the entire human race to come into sin. So we have a sin problem. We have a sin barrier. We have a, a, a sin issue that separated us from God. But Jesus is the rescue package. Jesus is the one that came so that he would deal with our sin, so that he could open relationship to the Father. And so Jesus is the story, and that's what this is all about over here. It is culminating on the cross, and Jesus dying on the cross. And then, of course, there is our response. What do we do with Jesus? What do we do with this one called the Christ? How do we respond to him? And so those are important parts of the gospel story. It's important that we know the four components because without those four components, this story has no significance, has no relevance. So let's begin to tell the story. How I would do the story is I would take all the pieces to the side over here and, and what I would do is I'd begin to tell the story is that Jesus was hung up on a cross and that cross was put in the ground. The Bible tells us, and I keep using the word the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us, because this is not a story of our imagination. This is not a story of us making up. It's not a make-believe story. But the Bible, which is our foundation, the Bible, which is our, uh, our absolute authority, says that Jesus died on the cross and so it was put on the cross. The Bible tells us that there were two thieves, on one on either side of Jesus. And so we put the thieves on either side of Jesus over here, on the side of the cross. The Bible tells us that they took dice. They took dice. And so we've got the two little dice over here. The Bible says that they threw dice for his garments. They wanted to, somebody, those soldiers wanted to take his garments as a souvenir of the day. Because remember, people dying on the cross was quite a normal thing. It was part of the Roman a way of 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 dealing with people of criminals the the way they put them to death was very common was the cross so thousands upon thousands of people would die on crosses but here we have Jesus dying on the cross what made Jesus death on a cross different from all the other deaths that happened in the roman times the bible tells us that on the cross they put a name it was written in three languages the three common languages of the day so that every person who read it would understand who this person was. Here is the king of the Jews. The Bible also tells us that the soldiers took a spear and they put it in his side because they, that is how they would also um, cause a person's life to come to an end. So we have three crosses. In the middle is the one who would die for our sin. He is the first R, Redeemer. He is the Redeemer. He is the one who came to buy back man from the sin problem, the Redeemer. On the one side, we have one of the thieves who was responsive. He was responsive to Jesus. He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. On the other side, we have one who rejected. He said, if you are who you say you are. Get off the cross. Come off the cross. Save yourself and save us. And so we have three R's. One is the Redeemer. One is the one who responded uh, and the one who rejected. Each one of them is very important in the story. All these other pieces relate specifically to Jesus dying on the cross. 
But here's the challenge. Here is the challenge of this uh, paper tear when we finish. Jesus is the only one who could be the Redeemer. He's the only one who could die for our sins. This one who responded, who responded to Jesus, he died to his sin. But the other one who rejected Jesus died in his sin. So one died for our sins, one died to his sins, and one died in his sin. The choice for us, and this is the challenge we give every time we give this gospel message using this paper tear. Which thief are you? Are you the one who responded, you received, or are you the one who rejected? I pray that this has been a tremendous blessings to you. Uh, I look forward to having you come and join me again when we come together one more time and share another gospel object lesson using paper tears. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. See you soon. Bye.